Hello everybody and welcome to Music Industry Insights Worldwide, Volume 3. And today I have the amazing Bee with me. Hi Bee, how are you? Hello, yeah, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, really well. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on the show. Really appreciate your time. So tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from and what you do in the music industry. Yeah, okay. So um, obviously my name is Bea Damick. I run a music PR agency called Liberty Music PR. Um, I've been doing that for about seven years. Um, my story is a bit different in that I came into the music industry a bit later in my life. So um, I'd always, so when I finished school and then went to uni, um, I kind of just thought, right, I'm going to get into marketing and didn't really know what industry I wanted to be in. And then, but I knew maybe comms and that sort of thing would suit my skill set. So I literally just went from like job to job when I finished uni. None of it was anything I was really passionate about, if I'm honest. And then I remember going to a festival. I was probably like late 20s. I went to a festival in Brighton because I lived in Brighton called The Great Escape. Oh. And then I remember thinking, oh, my goodness, what an exciting place, what an exciting industry, like the music industry. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was thinking, oh, that's where I want to be. That's exactly what I want to do. And um, then telling like my boyfriend at the time, oh, I'm going to I'm going to get into the music industry. And he was like, no, you're not. You're nearly 30. Like, you know, yeah. you know yeah. I, I was like, you know, he's like, you need 30. You haven't got experience. You, have, you need to get into the industry younger. And I was like, nah. I'm going to prove to you that I can do this. So, yeah. So what I did, like, through my early 30s was basically try and do as much as I can in in the music industry to sort of, like, showcase myself. So um, I just thought, how can I get in? Like, I sent loads of emails to music companies and agencies, but no one really replied. Yeah. Um, so I just started to make my own opportunities, basically. Um, yeah, so I... Like yeah. launched a radio show, wow. blog. I just did loads of stuff. Um, and then it all basically came about probably when I was like 35. So it literally, so when people are really worried and think that it's too late for career changes, I always say, no way, honestly. I came from like a corporate background yeah. in another industry and I actually managed to actually get you know a sustainable income and career but not until I was in my mid 30s um and so yeah so then I so how did it all happen so I was managing about so I had a night in Brighton yeah. a live music night um at Green Door Store every Sunday it's like new music new artists and um a band came in and played for me and they were brilliant and they were like oh we need a manager would you be our manager? Um, and I was. And then we were kind of planning their next release and kind of looking at agencies and things like that for like PR. And we basically signed up with an agency in London. Um, unfortunately, the agency didn't do a good job. And then I had to kind of save the day a bit. So um, so I basically like took the press release, rewrote it, repitched it out myself and then realised actually I was really good at it. Yeah. Um, and that's literally where the liberty started like it was totally organic it was like and then people within my circles saw that I was quite good at doing the PR for the band I was managing and then Normanton Street um who are Brighton based band were like can you do our next release you're really good and that was it it literally grew it was like one band then another artist and another band and it was just really slow and organic basically I love that um, inspirational story and you know you're <laughs> my own when you you know sometimes you feel like because you're going to an, in an industry and I think mm. you've got a broader reputation and people have got to get to know you as a person and sometimes mm. opportunities are quite hard to find if you don't know the mm. right the right places and I yeah. really that inspiring that you made your own opportunities you created your own and you did yeah. it with passion which is really really inspirational and it's the same yeah. as story yeah so like you know because on LinkedIn I always get loads of DMs from younger people entering the music industry or thinking of and they're always like I don't know where to start what to do what advice can you can you give me and I always say to them if you can maybe create your own opportunity it will just be a, a slow footing in like um, maybe you know launch a little um, a music podcast or maybe launch like a blog or something that shows that you're quite you know you've got an interest and you're active and you're sure. doing something 
um, because it is hard to get a foot in the door in the music industry. And it is quite a closed kind of industry, I think, if you're not in it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I do definitely understand the challenges. Yeah. Was like a musical education when you moved into the industry. Have you ever had a musical education? No, I haven't. And I would love to. I feel like I've just taught myself as I've gone along. Um, and, I, you know, I totally see huge benefits in music education. And I feel like that's maybe where I lack. But I come from. So my background is in marketing and business and communication. So, and that's obviously a huge part of um, what is taught in, in music education. So, yeah, so I think I can apply myself in that way. But in terms of actual, um, no, I don't have that experience. Well done to you for getting this far and for doing all the amazing Thank things you do. Wow, that's Thank super, you. super Thank inspiring. You. Um, and what kind of challenges and barriers have you had to overcome um in your career and your career path obviously being a parent and all the other things you you do so. yeah there's been quite a few I'd say because um I always felt like an imposter in the industry so for example because obviously like my my dream was to go and work for a music PR agency that's what I wanted to do and I will work for a, a, you know a music agency so the fact that I created one myself organically um was like okay but I need to learn that off somebody who's teaching me you know I think I could have actually done with a mentor right at the start so I always had that kind of the challenge for me was I was my own getting in my own way at times right. because I never thought I was like 100% the real deal when it came to music PR but then the more and more I spoke to other people they're like you're doing just the same as a normal fully fledged paid agency in London that's been around for years there's nothing you know and actually I was sort of tackling things at, um, with a fresh pair of eyes and sort of looking at like how do we promote this artist in in this blog or you know in general in the music industry so yeah I always had that imposter syndrome and I still, I still get it sometimes now you know um, like that I'm like should I be here and you know and I suppose right. another course. thing for me was yeah when I felt pregnant so I like so basically my story is that I launched the business in 2016 that's when like obviously I started doing PR for the band I managed then I started doing another campaign and I started doing another one and then decided actually I was going to give this a go so I was like right maybe I should quit my job my corporate job my nine to six and just start Liberty let's just see what happens um and then so I did that I get handed in my notice saved up like three months worth of rent um just in case it didn't go right and then I found out I was pregnant literally like a month later so I so I would li literally just left like a really nice maternity packaged corporate role about to go off on my own and then I was pregnant so I was like oh my god what am I gonna do so 2016 was quite mad um but the other challenge I had so during that time that I was pregnant I actually hid the fact I was pregnant from everybody from female artists male artists like everyone that I worked with and everyone in between um like I just felt like I couldn't be honest with people that I was pregnant um because of for fear of them thinking that I wasn't going to do a good enough job or I was going to get I was going to go sort of you know I was going to disappear once I'd had the baby oh you know and I needed them to trust that I could do their job because I was servicing all the campaigns myself yeah. um so that was a challenge and and actually I felt like I got quite a little a, a bit more it felt like I got felt like I got a bit more of a criticism or maybe a bit of a bad attitude towards some of the female clients I had which was really interesting you know um uh whereas yeah so that that was a big thing and I feel like we've moved so much forward in the industry now in in the music you know industry in terms of um supporting mums in music like I even run my own community called okay. Mammy um but back then it definitely felt like a really lonely place to be as a, a new mother in music yeah oh wow so that's really good so you've got your own little support group for other parents in music yeah industry. yeah it like I started that so when I'd had my daughter um and I was going to loads of like women in music groups I when I was at these groups I was like oh is there any mothers in music groups and lots of people were like mm, don't know I'm not sure they're, and there is one that's run by she she said so which is amazing um but I wanted something a bit more localized to Brighton so me and another um 
musician mama we both decided to create our own community and we we host like regular events where I say regular probably once a year now um in places like Soho House they're they're, you know not kind enough to give us a space for free which is amazing but they've been amazing like we've put on panels where really inspiring women in music who happen to be mums talk about their journey we've had people turn up to the event who've just fallen pregnant and are really unsure about whether they want to carry on or not and then been inspired by the panelists and gone like yeah I can do this so um yeah so it's yeah for me I felt that was quite a challenge uh, so I think the yeah imposter syndrome and just being a mother and being re- viewed in a maybe a, a more negative way because of that yeah well, thank um, you for that. I think that's really important I think you're not the only one that feels that way you know um, yeah. that and, and to obviously support other women and parents I think it's fantastic mm. if anyone wants to find out more about your organization is there anywhere they can find you yeah so we have an instagram page so it's we're known as mammy mammy m-a-m-i we have an um a instagram page we did have a website but i think maybe we forgot to renew the Squarespace. so we, we will be getting that back up and running though um and we where else facebook page as well so we've got a private facebook page which you can you can you can join as well if, if it feels that it's appropriate but it's um yeah we're here to tackle um you know challenges changes we want to be a support network we want to be an informative educational network um but we also want to help other organizations and people in music maybe who don't know how to deal with somebody who's just to turn around and said i'm pregnant or maybe you're a tour manager and your artist is you know said they're pregnant maybe you don't have the tools to kind of understand how to navigate that and we want to be able to help those people realize that actually there are things they maybe need to consider now that they're on tour with a pregnant woman and what you know what they they are basically so um yeah we want to make some real real positive changes and we might be actually partnering with quite a big um u.s based agency um sorry a community who are doing similar things in the u.s so we're going to try and collaborate on a few events this year yeah so i'm really excited about that yeah fantastic um mm-hmm. i was going to also ask you so looking at the yeah. kind of percentage of parents in the industry i think we've got around 27 percent of the music industry workforce is our parents compared to the <laughs> Yeah, compared to like 44% of the general population. So when you actually look at it, um, yeah. why do you think some of these reasons or some of these problems occur with being a parent in the music? Mm. What do you think some of these issues could be? Yeah, so when we we sort of ask a lot of the young women that come to our events, like what they feel the challenges could be for them, um, or even just talking to young women in music, um, a lot of them will always say, that oh you but you can't be you can't have a career in music and be a mother at the same time like you have to choose one or the other so I feel that there is that real stigma around just maybe they're not being enough support um maybe the maternity packages aren't as favorable as other industries and and especially maybe as an, an artist feeling like you just can't do both but also on the industry side as well like um you know I've got friends that are at some of the biggest kind of um, agencies um, and music companies in the UK and they're all saying the same thing that you you could you can't possibly juggle the two the career and motherhood so I feel like maybe that could be the reason right why there's just that weird attitude towards it that maybe starts from the top so um, really want to kind of try and change that and that's what we're trying to do even if we play a small part in making that you know putting that positive message out there that actually you can do it you can you know there's a great network out there some people find that they have achieved more since becoming a mother I feel like for me maybe the fact that I had those pressures of being you know not being able to waste any time like to every hour that I had free had to be productive I think that probably gave me that extra push and um, I know from a musician's perspective some of our uh, some of the women in the in the community are saying that it felt they felt more creative since they became mothers oh, they wrote some of their best songs so that makes me really happy to hear that same here well done B. that's lovely <laughs> so great to hear the work you're doing I, I had no idea about that so thanks for sharing oh um, yeah I know I need to I you've reminded me I need to do more in it so um yeah because it's so it's so needed so yeah 
definitely is and thank you for being so vulnerable and sharing your story because I think you know that inspires other people it also lets yeah. other people know that they're not on their own and there are yeah. organizations out there that are there to support you so please do yeah. check out me if you want to and Liberty PR oh. so yeah. what is on ED&I at the moment in the music and entertainment industry give us your say that again so sorry say that again sorry problem what's your kind of uh thoughts on the ED&I um in the music industry in music and entertainment at the moment so if you're looking at the yeah. quality of diversity, what do you have? How well do you think we're doing? Um, I feel like we are slowly getting there, slowly, but I feel like there needs to be, there still needs to be so much more work to be done. And, and that is why the work that the fantastic work that you do and, and, and other people and organizations is so, so vital. I feel like um it's getting better. I feel like it's getting better that we are seeing more diversity across different um, companies within music, but I feel like we're still, there's still such a long way to go. And um, yeah, you know, um, even like with my organization, like I always try and sort of figure out who's coming through the door, who are we recruiting? How can we do things better? Why are we not recruiting? or having a, a sort of real balanced represent, re representation, how can we change that? And that's something that's so, um, that I'm really passionate about, but I feel like there is so much more that we could all do. So, yeah, and what kind of things would you like to see improve in say the next two years? What are the main things that really- Yeah, I think I'd like to see, like, I just like, you know, the decision makers of music, I'd like to see that there is a real diverse representation at board level. I still feel like at that very top level, it's still predominantly men um, and white men as well. And I feel that's really disappointing. Um, and, you know, even as a woman CEO, like, you know, when I go out if I you know I've been, I went out for dinner with somebody last week and um, I wanted to pay and they just assumed that the man was paying and, and kind of put the bill towards the man and and that I just like things like that I think it's still so intrinsically um, in built in all of us that actually the men are still the leaders and um, that's the way it should be and I feel that um, I mean, there are some organisations that are doing great jobs, but I feel that we need to, there's just so much that we need to do. And um, yeah, and, and yeah, I'm always keen to hear more. And I'm, I'm always keen to sort of be educated as well and kind of learn more as well, because I just feel like there is so much that, you know, we could be doing, basically. There yeah. is learn out there as well you're right and to have mm. people like yourselves that are pushing these organizations to be diverse and inclusive I think yeah. is, is the way forward um yeah being so inclusive and kind and obviously supporting me and my work as well so I really do appreciate that thank you thank you oh that's really good um and the next thing would be um has the music industry ever affected your mental health or made you feel like um you're not you feel like you have to step back from it or you feel like there's anything that you could kind yeah, of definitely but I feel maybe that's more um I it's um self-inflicted yes. so I feel that um I am a bit of a workaholic so um they're like I love what I do I honestly like I love it and I sometimes I could I feel like I could work it doing what I'm doing sort of nine till 12 a.m at night sort of thing <laughs> but I get, I get that. <laughs> I get that I'm a mother and I'm a partner and I'm a friend and a daughter and I'm um, all these things are different. You've got a life. Yeah, got I've got a life, life and I feel that maybe I put those pressures on myself. So I think where um my mental health might be compromised, I think is maybe maybe because I've just sort of just been really focused on getting something done and realised that I actually haven't had any fresh air that day or maybe I've gone to bed really late like quite wired from being on the laptop till late at night with the blue light and then have a really restless sleep and then wake up feeling groggy the next morning and then get back to it again and I'm like oh I feel like I'm frazzled and for that again it's it's all self that for me is self-inflicted um but I do recognize for artists the huge pressures that are in place for them you know just in terms of uh, thriving to be the best and and 
thinking that they need to be like you know up there and successful and I think there's so much that you know it's expensive being an artist um there's so much competition and I, I feel I really feel for that and one thing one initiative actually we're, we're bringing back at Liberty is we're, we're doing this thing called Wellness Wednesdays um, and we're actually opening it up, opening it out to the whole industry. So um, we're going to do once a month. We're going to have somebody come in, like an expert in meditation or um, nutrition or yoga, and just show everybody via a Google Hangout, like how to do a ten-minute meditation, like a group one. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go live with that this week, so people can sign up for it. I'm really excited about that actually. Um, and but yeah I, I I recognize it certainly within my team sometimes I can see when someone's looks a bit stressed or maybe a client isn't quite as happy but we're trying everything we can it, it's hard it's a it's a really hard industry because you want to please everyone and you never want anyone certainly as an agency owner of a PR company I don't want anyone to ever walk away feeling disappointed and um, but I, I realize there's a lot of stress that goes into being an artist um, um yes i definitely yeah. agree and what yeah. kind of, what kind of tips would you could you give or just give one tip if you could to the yeah audience? so for me and i i always come back to this myself because i'm i you know i understand that rituals are really important i'm all about um you know my well-being and, and putting in the good because I know that if I do that, then everything that comes out will, will you know, will pay, pay off later on. But I always think take time away from your um, work, your laptop, your phone. Like sometimes it could just be too much. You've got like messages coming in, social media alert. Um, and I just think like take some time out for you. To, even if it's 10 minutes, put the device down, walk across the garden, sit sit on a bit of grass or wherever on a park bench or something. Get out there, get some fresh air. I always think write down your four thoughts. For me, uh, journaling's been pretty epic and quite life changing. Um, I just get a scrapbook, a blank book, and get a pen and write. Sometimes, like I'll write until there's nothing more to write on the page, um, and it, none of it will make sense. It, I won't even be able to read half, half of it, but it's like therapy for me. Yeah. Um, I always do like a reminder of why I'm lucky in life, and I find gratitude lists and things like that really help. Um, for me exercise I carve out like I go to a gym that's 24 hours open so sometimes I'll even go to the gym at 10 p.m at night uh, or six in the morning just because I need to get that kind of release and I can do it through that um, I find you know connecting with like-minded individuals in music because it can feel quite lonely as well certainly for me as a female CEO um I feel like I can't really talk to many people in my team about, say, something that's upsetting me or stressing me out because I don't want to worry them. You know, if we're having a slow month, I can't go, oh, we're having a slow month to a, to a colleague because I don't want them to stress out. Yeah. Um, so I find that actually having people who are similar level in another area of, of music always helps me so I can just bounce things off, ideas and just get some advice um but yeah well I think mental health is yeah you, you've got to give yourself a break and you have to step away from your work get some perspective and a walk even a walk helps and it's scientifically proven that actually walking 10 minutes a day can actually just clear your thoughts and your head and really allow you to have some great ideas if yeah. that's what you want what great um, advice yeah yeah I'm, I'm an advocate of that and also I do I mean you probably see my Instagram but I'm like I love things like cold showers um I, like, I do quite a bit of, yeah and I'm, it's crazy but for me it works like so if I wake up in the morning I feel a bit tired or groggy try also one tip I found that really works for me is and we all do it like I do it as well is try not to touch your phone when you wake up like and we all we all run the risk we put the phone beside our bedside table don't we that's where it is that's our alarm yeah. but if you can just avoid it, it for the first hour it does something to you neurologically actually sets you up for a more focused day um and I'm still trying to do that I like I'm work in progress that myself. I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> I wake up in the morning and just get on with everything else what great advice this it's been fantastic thank you for sharing all Aww, this thank, thank you me. I could go on and on but yeah they're the few things that I find that really work for me and hopefully they'll help um some of your listeners as well brilliant the last question of the day is Ooh. 
So what are your major successes and wins in the music industry? And do you have any up and coming projects that you'd like to share or release? Yeah. Oh, that's lovely to Yeah. So I think for me, um, obviously, I shared with you that I, um, so obviously, I didn't come from a musical background, like, and um, for me as well, like, um, just, so I grew up on a council estate in just outside of Bedford. Um, and, you know, things like music industry were like a dream it was like another world when I was a kid you know used to watch like the Brit Awards and read smash hits and be like wow how exciting is that like I you know I never thought that was possible I never actually planted that seed of ambition in me I just thought I had to get a normal job and that was that um so to be able to um for for me a really big thing was um and I think you were too this year was a being a Brit Award judge um for the categories and that was like huge for me because somebody who'd always like looked up to this industry um this award ceremony and as a kid being in this house you know and like not having much money and things like that and just like being able to know that actually you can really achieve anything you want if you put your mind to it and and um the same for like launching the business as well like honestly if there's anybody out there because I always just assume that people in this industry were quite um come from quite privileged backgrounds and quite affluent and they are actually there is a big chunk of that unfortunately it always happens in music and arts and things like that um but just to prove that actually anything is possible you just have to keep putting yourself out there and ask you have to ask sometimes if you want something you have to ask as well um so don't be afraid to ask um but yeah doing that and also um the the biggest thing for me is just giving people their first chance as well in in um at liberty so a lot of the our team members actually it is their first ever music job um Mm -hmm. and for me, I just like to, I see something in somebody and I just want to like nurture that. And, and I see some some great people in our company kind of grow and develop and they came in and they were like, you know, they didn't know anything or anyone. And then they sort of a year later, they're just this experienced, like confident young person. I'm like, wow, you know, and I was a part of that. And then they go off to work at like Spotify or something. I'm like, oh my goodness. So that is like one of my greatest sort of legacies is seeing these amazing um young people coming through you maybe using us as as a stepping stone and that's okay I I don't mind that um and and that makes me happy um and then my my biggest um success was probably my TED talk um last year yeah last year um because I was a young when I was young I was so shy I was so so terrified to speak um publicly even like in group scenario at school in the classroom like you know when you had to go around and everyone had to read a page from the English literature book I couldn't do that I was literally like the worst um and I hate puppet speak I still hate puppet speaking now but I look back at that video and go wow I did 14 minutes of just talking at a crowd a packed Cambridge theatre and I still can't believe I did that like it's still I still I'm like oh my god it it terrifies me just thinking I delivered that um so that would be probably one of my my biggest achievements and to just prove that um you can do anything you know you can do anything and you just have to put yourself in the right so for example with that scenario the TED talk it just so happened that I the guy that was running the talks and we'd stayed in contact for quite a few years because I'd helped him do some other bits and pieces and one day he just emailed me going I think you'd be great TED talk and I was like what me (laughs) um so you know I think you've got a great story and that was amazing so so yeah so I think those are my biggest achievements so far um and then for me um sort of next steps what I'm excited about we're looking to create like a community at Liberty. So we re- we recognise that the um, music industry is quite a lonely place. So we want to bring as many. I don't feel like there's enough of like, you know, like people joining a community and kind of going, I'm um, I'm a songwriter. Oh, I'm a guitarist. Or I'm, a, you know, oh, should we try and do something together? You know, so um, sort of bringing like people into like the community 
um, and supporting them and having like um, sessions that they can kind of get involved with. Like we're going to do like themed sessions every month, like what, what is sync and how do you kind of get, get uh, opportunities there? You know, how do you songwrite and that sort of thing? So we're going to be building a Liberty community. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Doing more on Mammy. I, like I think you've inspired me to probably start doing a bit more there. Um, and yeah, just carry on being, a good person and giving um giving back to the industry wherever i can so we, we'll carry on with our wellness wednesdays once a month and yeah just just hope hoping that you know we can just put some good back into this industry beautiful i wish everyone was like you in this industry then we wouldn't have any oh. <laughs> any social media handles or anything you'd like to share with the viewers is there anywhere they yeah. can yeah of course so if you want to check out what i'm up to um i am b um bee -E underscore adamic a-d-a-m-i-c and that's on instagram very happy for people to follow me on instagram linkedin as well i love linkedin i always um, encourage people to use that as a good platform linkedin was actually something that um, made me initially at the start of my career so I didn't know anyone and like I literally just used to like tap up people on LinkedIn and say hi oh, I really want to learn from you um and that was like a great tool for me so whenever I get DM from someone similar I'm like okay what can I do to help you know um so LinkedIn as well and then obviously Liberty Liberty Music PR all the handles are just at Liberty Music PR across like Facebook Twitter Instagram TikTok as well um but yeah thank you so much for having me um hopefully i'm hoping that you know one two three four, four people will be inspired by the story and mm -hmm. um and know that they can do it yeah beautiful thank you i'll leave a description with all the details, details and liberty, liberty yeah brilliant thank you you check out the amazing work that b's doing and liberty pr thank you so much for your time it's been super oh, cheers i appreciate it thank you Hi. <laughs> Press stop now. Cool. Oh, that was good. Stop.